to level up your podcast experience with a brand new episode of Local Chat. Grab your controllers, put on your headsets, and get ready for some serious gaming banter. And now, introducing your host, the master of wit and the gamer extraordinaire, Will Crosby. Hey there, fellow gamers. Welcome to Local Chat, the podcast that's all about friendships forged in the fires of video game glory. I'm your host, Will Crosby, a lifelong gamer who has yet to find a health potion for his back pain from countless hours spent in front of the screen. But hey, who needs lumbar support when you have epic adventures to embark on, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, yeah. let me introduce you to today's dynamic duo of guests. First up, we have the Pixel Perfect Ian Gibson, a master strategist with a knack for finding secrets in every virtual realm. Ian, they say you've collected more hidden treasures than a pirate with a map and an eye patch. How do you do it? Well, Will, I like to think of myself as the Indiana Jones of gaming. I've developed a sixth sense for uncovering Easter eggs and game glitches. It's like I have a cheat code for finding secrets. Plus, a little bit of luck never hurts. <laughs> Amazing, <laughs> Ian. Our listeners are definitely in for a treat with your treasure hunting experience. And now let me introduce you, introduce the man whose reflexes are so lightning fast, his opponents accuse him of using a turbo controller. Stu Kimball. Thank you for the kind words, Will. Yes, my fingers move at the speed of light, and my opponents are often left wondering if I have superhuman powers. But let me assure you, it's all just years of training and the occasional infusion of gamer fuel, aka copious amounts of energy drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Stu, you're like the flash of the gaming world, leaving your rivals in the dust. Your lightning quick reflexes and strategic mind make you a force to be reckoned with. Well, well, it's all about finding that perfect balance between skill and caffeine-induced hyperactivity. But hey, it works. Indeed it does, Stu. And together, the three of us are going to delve into the virtual universes, share our gaming triumphs, and of course, discuss the hilarious mishaps that happen along the way. So buckle up, listeners, because Local Chat is here to bring you your laughter, camaraderie, and a whole lot of gaming goodness. Get ready for the ultimate gaming hangout where friendships are formed and controllers are conquered. Stay tuned for local chat with your host, Will Crosby, and the gaming wizards Ian Gibson and Stu Kimball. It's time to hit the start <laughs> button and embark on a journey of epic proportions. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Woo, I, folks. You know, that's that started funny, and then it got sad, and then I realized... That makes us sound like one of those top 10 podcasts where everybody is crazy about it. And then you listen to it and it's just overwritten and way too smarmy. Yep. So, yeah, good job, chat GPT. That is what a podcast <laughs> sounds like, I guess. Yeah, we, we love conquering controllers. That's what you do in video yes. games. We delve oh. into the virtual universes. <laughs> that there was one thing. Oh, where was it? There was one thing that it said that I... Oh, the turbo controller bit. I thought was very good. It was like that a pull. Yeah. yeah. Um, the yeah. fact that it got that is huge. Yeah. Oh yeah, I had, I had started this because I was making uh, fake ad reads with ChatGPT. And I was like, oh they God. weren't that funny. They were just kind of like ad reads for dumb products. So I was like, oh, let me, um, let me see like what uh, like stuff they would make up for an intro. And you know it worked pretty yeah. well. Yeah, um, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. I should have it's, said um, for the host, like it put a narrator in, which I didn't originally want, um, but uh, mm -hmm. it still kind of worked out. I, I look, I'm just gonna say it. I can totally see why companies are pivoting to AI generated content it's because scary for a lot of those com yeah. yeah, but for a lot of those companies, the content that they were forcing their human employees to put out is this exact same quality. And if they want shitty writing, it turns out a computer can do shitty generic writing very well. <laughs> and if that's what your company <laughs> wants, then yeah, sure, go ahead, dickheads, you, you know? Yeah, yeah, oh, uh, for God. sure. Um, well, folks, uh, that is... That's the podcast, ChatGPT. No, um, this is Local <laughs> Chat. Let him take over. <laughs> uh, we're here to talk about video games. We're going to talk about one particular video game this week. I didn't even open the show notes yet, folks. I got to get... Get, get on my A game here. Um, but before we get to that, we have a little chit chat section that we like to just like slide right in there. Pretend like we're just having a natural conversation. 
So there's two bullet points here in the chit chat section that it's very natural <laughs> and flowy. So I just want to make sure we just kind of like fall into it. Uh-huh. Natural segue. You won't even notice it. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. So just so everyone's aware, chit chat starting. Yeah. Um, guys, what are we talking I about to... first. Oh, what? In the chit chat section, what are we talking about first? Oh, yeah, this chit chat section that we're in. Yeah, yeah. Which what's the first? Well, one? I just yeah, wanted to naturally right bring up that I went to the Tears of the Kingdom NYC launch. If that's okay with you guys. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's yes. that's right. That okay. is okay. Tell me about my, it. My my brother it. tried to get in and he couldn't get a reservation and he goes to Fordham in Manhattan and he was like, "Am I just gonna sneak in? I don't know." But he did. <laughs> so I'm glad that I have someone that was able to go. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, it was cool. Uh, I we talked about this a bit on what was it the Zelda launch stream last Friday? Yes, yes. And so I I went to into Manhattan with my coworkers Tom and Devante, who are on the oh. uh, or Tom's on my <sighs> half on my team, half on the video team, and Devante's on the video team. Uh, and we uh, we had a nice dinner, uh, and then we um, Ooh, walked you over. Have? Where'd you go? The Elgin Elgin, I think it's the Elgin company, company expense. Called? No, no, we paid. We paid our, oh. our out of our money, out of our own hard-earned cash. Uh, we got some wings. We all three of us got the South, the Southern fried chicken sandwich with like oh buffalo sauce, a ranch and buffalo sauce on it. We boneless because we just, boneless. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Nice. the sandwich. <laughs> Boneless? I would love if it was just like three separate little sandwich. wings. Yeah. If, if I had any balls at all, that's how I would order all my chicken sandwiches from now on. Bone Can in, I get the chicken please? sandwich? Uh, boneless, please. No bones. <laughs> no, Thank bone you. Bone in. You gotta get a bone in. No bone in. Yeah, that's the ballsy bone move. <laughs> um. So yeah, we got that, and then we walked over and we shot a TikTok, interviewed a bunch of people with uh, fun Zelda questions uh, that they surprisingly got a lot of them right which um everyone got this question right which i'll post to you what was the last zelda game to feature ganondorf wait what do you mean by feature like to have ganondorf in it in it yeah twilight princess mainline series or does that include mainline series yeah yeah okay because i was gonna say the whatever uh dynasty warriors one um yeah is it twilight princess it is Twilight Princess. Okay. Great job, guys. Look, as somebody job. who recently discovered that Ganon and Ganondorf are technically two different characters, I'm very surprised I got that right. So, uh, wait, what's I. the difference is Ganondorf... Oh, okay. So I was going to say, G- Ganondorf's the human, and Ganon is the pig monster thing? Oh. Yeah, Ganon's like the evil spirit, and then Ganondorf is the human form of the Gerudo Ganon. form. But also, uh, yeah, the Gerudo form. Oh. Yeah. So anyways. Uh, well, actually, he's not. I mean, he's the hu- he's the manifestation, physical humanoid manifestation, because I think only in Ocarina he's Gerudo, because it's oh, part of the storyline. I don't know if right. he's Gerudo in the other ones, but I could be wrong. Wasn't he, wasn't he Gerudo in Breath of the Wild? I mean, not necessarily, but he looked Gerudo. In Tears of the Kingdom, you mean? No, in Breath of the Wild. He wasn't in Breath of the Wild. The human form wasn't? No. This is why I'm just going to throw this out there. <laughs> I think the whole Ganon Ganondorf thing is fucking stupid <laughs> because the series is so weird that I always thought it was just yeah. one person who was like doing whatever and switching around. It, it never in my head was like it's two different characters. No, half I think and it half. is I'm one just person. Like, it's the same fucking. It is. No, no, but, yes. but it's just like I, I mean I, I know that but at the same time like yeah. then why do they have two fucking names and they're like he's not in this one it's like no he is in that one he just doesn't switch forms it's like yeah that's, that's it's how stupid. I feel um, it's anyways so we went over to the launch uh, we got in because the, the VIPs which I was included was on the Ooh. second floor um, so we get inside, and of course, uh, there was, Gene Park was there, Washington Post. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Saw him. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't say hi to any of these people because I would throw up. Um, Jeff Keeley was there. I snapped a no, picture okay. of him. Uh, cool. I think Stephen Totilo? Is that how you say his last? Yes. His? Yes. Yeah, he was, I think it was him, unless it was someone else who looked exactly like him. Um, and then uh, I actually recognized Jesse from Prima Games. Uh, we met at the giant bomb bombathon last year and i was mm-hmm. like he was like oh thank god someone i know is here <laughs> and so, like he stuck with us the rest of the time 
but anyways the the guy was the pr guy was like okay so everyone gonna go upstairs just to let you know uh no pictures of the dev area or the like live stream area and no pi pictures of the devs who are here mr onuma is here and um i don't know his name only because i didn't look it up and also the guy didn't say it which to me sounds rude there was a, another guy who was like i don't know if he was co-game director but he's featured in a lot of the photos with eg onuma so i, I think oh. he's like co-game director i don't know his name but i I think he was there. I, I remember Reggie Fizeme. Yeah, Reggie Fizeme. Doug Bowser was there. He gave me a thumbs Reggie? up. Hey. Um, oh, that's cool. So anyways, we went, up, went upstairs and kind of just were like, everyone's like, oh, you can pre-purchase Zelda and they'll hold it until midnight. And it's just like, oh, okay. So I think Tom went off and bought the uh, collector's edition. He got it five minutes early. Not like he could start <gasps> playing it. Um, that's illegal. <laughs> but yeah, it was just like kind of milling around. They gave us all an amiibo. So I have a uh, oh, Tears of the Kingdom amiibo. Cool. Yeah, I have that amiibo now. Okay. Um, and it was, I mean, it was, it wasn't like a party. It was just like right. a bunch of VIPs getting together and they were just like showing stuff wow. off and everything. Um, so it was pretty fun. Uh, I had a good time Wait. and then I took a $60 Uber home. <laughs> oh my God. The price of the game which i expensed of course price, but... yes good <laughs> i was gonna say will you'll now be a part of uh my favorite instagram account ever called hottest gaming events where it's them taking <gasps> pictures of celebrities at different gaming events and it'll be like will crosby at the i'm gonna be a hot or oh, you might be in the background who knows you know i, I saw like... myself game explain put a video out because i just googled it afterwards and i saw myself in that video and i was like i oh, love no. that doug <laughs> bowser and ganondorf <laughs> 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 oh boy uh, anyways uh so that was super fun uh i i i very much enjoyed that and it was a cool uh cool experience um that's i mean the chit chat section i had another thing in here but we can kind of bring that up as as we're going in through this thing no. um yeah i kind of what hold on because that is very vague what what does that mm -hmm. mean um, so I'm addicted to meth. I don't know if you guys know this, but <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. for, I... for the people who are not reading the thing, it just says balancing two addictions. And I was like, oh, yes. let's, let's talk I, about it, Will. I am addicted <laughs> to, to Tears of the Kingdom, first of all. You and but I am also addicted to the anime Initial D. And <laughs> it's... Hell yeah. It's so hard to do both. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Did you um, do i i did buy a car yo um, oh, that looks good so i thought you were gonna say i did buy a car and then pan around to your oh, actual 86 yeah. toyota I wish um so <laughs> i have to build that at some point uh, i'm building Wait, okay so, right now sorry the the that was my dad's first car the, oh, the are you 80 fucking kidding me what he, his first car was a uh 86 it wasn't that exact one but it was an 86 japanese uh celica supra with the pop-up headlights and the whole yeah bit. um and my brother and i to this day still get mad at him for selling that car because oh, yeah i want to drift down the hills in the in <laughs> yeah. that car in in my bad cg car <clears throat> oh my goodness um i'm on season two now second stage cgi nice. is a lot better third three oh, is really? a lot better um season one was rough because they were like Hey, we're doing an anime, and when we cut to the cars, everyone needs to be a PNG asset in the world of the video game mm -hmm. or of the 3D <laughs> world. And then in in second stage, uh, they start morphing them together. So like, there's anime oh, okay. with the CG car in the background, and like characters can move and gotcha. stuff. Also, the art style is way better and more refined in the second season. Okay. Um, and I have uh, no longer racist. I remember all of their names now um so you can't tell them apart but you remember yeah. oh yeah they, all their names. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. oh my god oh the oh god. the is it the i think i got to the the i'm just gonna gloss over that one we got to the sun stars <laughs> the uh, red suns the red suns that's what it was because i have when i was like 10 my best friend gave me box sets of first and second stage and oh. so they have the really bad u.s translation from like mm -hmm. the early 2000s or the 90s or something whenever you know like right after it had come out 
uh, whenever it got translated, and it's so good and so bad. I love it so much. It's so I, yeah, good. I, I don't know what translation I have, but it, it's good. Like, the voice actors are good. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's so, you, I learned so much about cars all the time. They, like, talk about cars all the time. Um, and I just, I just want to race cars. Also, I have destroyed my YouTube algorithm with model car uh, <laughs> stuff to the Hell point yeah. where, like, Hell yeah. there are, I also did a cursory eBay search japan love you 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 have car models for everything literally every vehicle um it's great i think it's i might amazing. order one of the like mini truck car models because we were talking about yeah. mini trucks last week and, to, and, and they have like a ramen fantastic truck version. models yeah there's yes. a there's a toy store in japantown in san francisco that has all of those like it's a japanese <gasps> model <gasps> shop because I always nice. they have a they have a model of Spike's sword swordfish two from Ooh. Bebop that I always want to get, but mm. they also they had your the one that you showed and then um, they have the mini trucks and there is actually a famous mini fire truck in San Francisco. It has its own Instagram page and it goes around and they have like a version of that one too, like little little tiny model sets. Oh. They're amazing. I oh, love that's models. cool. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to build this. I'll get to it eventually. I might hold off until I get like an air, uh, air, uh, air sprayer. <laughs> Airbrush. <laughs> Airbrush. Thank you. Could not They're think of the word. Air fryer. Uh, yeah. Air fryer. So I can melt everything <laughs> and put it together. Um, but yeah, I, the show's really great. Those are my two addictions. I have to decide between tears of the, cause the problem is, I can't you can't just put initial D on. I got to pay attention to it because there's so much good stuff. That's happening. It's such a good show. Um, yeah. Got Itsuki, uh just met a nice girl and they're going out. Oh, it's so good. That's going so good. going back to the name thing you mentioned, one of my favorite animes, uh, Legend of the Galactic Heroes. They did something really cool. They kept they were just constantly introducing all these characters and stuff. And at least this the sub that I was watching Every time a character came on screen in a scene, they would just pop up real quick and they would be like Lauren Ridehold and they would like give their like full title and everything. And it was fantastic in keeping track of all these guys because it was like it it was also like 80s anime where they're not really adding a lot of facial detail and stuff. So there were definitely people that you couldn't you couldn't tell them apart, let alone remember them from two episodes ago, throwaway yep. scene. So it's like, it would, there was like four layers of subtitles. It would be like, you know, like what's, <laughs> what's on the menu on the screen, what that person's name is, then their role and title, which army they controlled. Yeah, yeah. And then the line they were saying, and it was fantastic. Oh Jesus. Oh, that's so great. Cool. They, um, yeah. The other struggle was between the first, the, like the art style shifted a little bit. It got more refined. So there are like four or five characters that I was like, I don't know if you're this character yet and they haven't said your name. So right. like, is it Ikatani or like, am I wait? Mm-hmm. Like, are you someone else they're introducing now? So, um, but now I've got it all settled. Uh, it's super fun. It's great to watch. I highly recommend it. Um, can't wait to, fit. So I can't wait to watch more of it. It's just, that's all I think about. Um, <laughs> and the other thing I always think about is tears of the kingdom boys. Mm. Boys to men. It, yeah, let me if if you don't mind me stepping in, is, folks. If you're playing please. this game, don't don't worry. At the top of our little show notes, we have a section called "Can Discuss and Do Not Discuss." So let me tell you exactly what we are going to discuss: the tutorial area, the world map in general, early game mechanics and powers, and some starting tips and tricks and first impressions. We're not going to talk about any of the four main quest lines. We're not going to talk about mid to late stuff, Zonai devices, gloom etc any post tutorial story beats things like that we're not going to touch on that stuff so don't worry as long as you've played a little bit of the game honestly as long as you have watched that mechanics trailer they put out recently yeah you're going to be safe in this discussion did i put that part on there i feel like i I did not put the spoiler in the the spoiler section you piece of shit i put the slash part but you said the first part Well, I said the first part, and then I didn't say the second part because the second yeah, part God. is a spoiler. Oh, yes. very much so. Um, yeah, that one I've hidden from Karen. Uh, I've been very purposefully not. It's, it's funny because it's it's not that hidden in the game. It's only a couple hours in. So next week we will talk about it, but this yeah, week right, is right, too right. early. The only thing I will say about that thing is the 
initial music associated with it is insanely good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Oh, I can't. The whole soundtrack I, to that oh. game. God. Um. Anyways, well, yeah. Stu, you you yes. put out a video already. You crazy fucking madman. <laughs> Tell me all about your Tears of the Kingdom and and the video you made and 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 give us a pitch on that as well. Um, my, my video is very skewed because it only has to do with a singular village in the game, uh, which I won't go too much into because it is in a section of the game that you don't unlock in the, in the first, you know, tutorial or even when you leave the tutorial island right after it. Uh, but it's, but it is in the last game. So Hateno village is my favorite village in any Zelda game. Um, I tweeted out recently, like, I just, I, where is the timeline where I wish I could just live in Hateno Village and walk around and go to the dye shop and, you know, have my little house made by the, the, the Sun Brothers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was, I actually, when I, when I started playing Tears of the Kingdom, I, I did that tutorial and I, I, you know, uh, got to the land of Hyrule, and like I say in the video, the first thing I did without any, uh, uh, like, you know, way to know of how to get there, I went straight for Hateno Village because I was like, I need to know if it's still there. <laughs> I need to know if yeah. my house is still there. I need to know, like, everybody's okay because uh, I love that village, and it holds a very special place in my heart. And speaking of music, that music that plays through it, especially there's like a string section that comes in. Mm -hmm. There's like a weird like accordion mm -hmm. section that plays, and then right after that, there's this string section that's kind of like melancholic and forlorn, and you're just, you're sitting at this village that literally means village at the end or village at the limits of the map and of the world, and you're safe and you're fine and... It's it's my heart. I love it so much. So yeah, if I it's on a uh, Super Donk YouTube channel, that's me. Um for the quick plug, it's just uh I think I changed the title cuz I'm trying to be more YouTube savvy and not just put out weird little videos. I actually have people watch them. So it's like why why does Hateno Village feel like home? Is what the video is called or Hateno means home. And that's <laughs> I, uh I yeah, go watch it. But yeah, I I've, I've been loving Tears of the Kingdom so far, and I have real, real quick. <laughs> can we go around the horn starting with you, Stu? I, I want to know how far you guys are in the game, roughly. So I'm trying to figure out maybe if you just tell me how many of the main storylines. Mm. And, and okay. I, I don't think it's a spoiler to say there's four. There's roughly four main quest lines, same as Breath of the Wild, as well as you know how many hearts and how many stamina you have, which I think is a good way of judging how much of the world you've explored. Yes, um, I think right now I have two of the main quest. No, no, three. Oh, I might, I might even have four. Wow, I, I have three. Stu, open... you're unemployed, right? I well, I'm a freelancer. <laughs> thank you very much. No, no. <laughs> I just, I just, yes, I've been I playing this game a lot, and yeah, I am not too. there yet. The game's not even out. Of, it's not been a week yet. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, and I feel like I'm barely into it, too. I, I think I have yeah. three just in the sense that I've talked to somebody and it's set off gotcha. uh, one of the quests because on my way to Hateno Village, I went through another village that started one of those quest lines. So um, really, I think I have five hearts. Um, yeah, five. Start with three. And I've been doing, I always do back and forth. So I'll do one stamina, yeah. one heart, one blah, 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 as it goes on. So I think I have five right now. And I have just completed one of the main sections of uh, like the, the big story quests. Gotcha. The, gotcha. What about, you, what about you, Will? Yeah. Uh, I have completed one of the story quests. I am probably 80% done with the second one you're supposed to do. Um, and then, uh, I have like seven or eight hearts and I have like three, I've done three stamina things as well. Okay. Um, I've explored way too much, uh, in that game. I just wanted to, I, so I had the same reaction with, uh, Hateno Village, um, Hateno Village, however you say it, no, uh, Hateno. hate no, but, <laughs> hate hate no. No. um, but I love Terrytown. Tarrytown is my favorite place in the world. I want to live in Tarrytown. 
So I had to immediately go to Terrytown. So I went and checked out Terrytown. I was debating that. Yeah, I was debating um, that. It, it, it my music uh, to bring up music again. My favorite music in Breath oh. of the Wild was the Terrytown theme. It's so good. And then off to the side of it, since they're expanding, there's a version of the theme that's really, really good as well mm. in a mm. section near it. And like, it, and they incorporate what that area is into the soundtrack. So it just sounds like wow. it sounds like S, uh, sound effects and music at the same time, which is oh, really good. Uh, and then up above it, there's another area that you will eventually unlock. And I think I mentioned this in our Zelda chat, but they there is a rendition of an Ocarina of Time song that they slowed <laughs> down for it. And, and I won't spoil what it is, uh, but and it's, it's top so... thumping by Jumbo Wumbo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, I got bitches. <laughs> um, but it's so good. It's it's just such a because I immediately recognized it and I was like, oh, is it that? And it, it's so slow enough that I was just waiting for the note beats to hit, and I was like, it uh, is yeah. that. Oh, um, wow. But I did go to uh, Hatena Village, um, which was nice. Um, I checked all that stuff out. I are you guys are you guys taking notes? I'm. I'm no, I'm a note I fiend. I, you're doing I found, stuff on. The, oh, nice. I, I drew a little I, I too. I forgot it? how good the pin system is in the game because it's pretty much the same as Breath of the Wild. It's fantastic. Um, but the other thing I've noticed, I feel like they did this more than they did in Breath of the Wild, is when you're having conversations with people, they'll drop important stuff in red. And more often than not, that will automatically get added as a side yep. quest yes. to your log. So you're just yep. not having to remember a lot of stuff because it's automatically yeah. cataloging it so for you. My main thing is I write down... There's always like the people who talk about the quest before you get to the quest giver. Right. So that yeah. that's the stuff I'm writing down. Like every single person in this game is talking about Lur Lurlin Village and the stuff oh, that has happened to it. Yeah. And so yeah. and I haven't gone there yet, so I just wrote it down so I remember it. Um and then there's other little stuff that are like there's there's like clearly unmarked quests as well because there's always right. in these types of games. So like those yeah. little things yes, I'm writing yeah. down or like if I'm reading a book, like there's a character's diaries that mention where the next one is. So like that stuff, so I'm writing down um, But the other thing I noticed with quests, even after you finish the quest, it updates the ending of the quest. So even if you finish like part two of a quest, it'll be mm -hmm. like, oh, I think they're heading to this place next in oh, the completed yes. quest yes. version yes. of it which yeah i, I was great. not expecting that either um so that so you're right this is keeping track of quests first of all way better than elden ring uh oh a, um, yeah, a man a, a, a yeah. small menu could be better than elden ring but <laughs> it's doing it better than breath of the wild which is nice too and mm -hmm. anytime there isn't after a conversation there isn't that quest pop up i talk to the person again and i write down those keywords in the like rumor section on this thing uh, and then I cross it off when I get the get the quest or I, I've explored the thing. Um, and that seems to work pretty well. As you can tell, I'm not really filling this out that much because most of them do give you a quest right away, which is nice. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Ian, where... what is your how far are you? Yeah. Getting? How far are you? Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually I'm similar to you, Will. I have one of the main story quests done um, in terms of hearts and stamina. I'm at eight hearts and I almost have my second stamina wheel filled out. Oh, nice. Um, I kind of hit this point where I was following the quest a little bit, but I forgot how enjoyable it is for me in Breath of the Wild and in this game as well, just to get some height, pull out the camera, just tag all the shrines and the towers, and then just start going to them. And so it's it's a little it's a little hard for me to focus on main storylines or even like roads and paths that people keep telling me. Like I talked to somebody and they were like, Oh, if you want to get to the mountain, you know, the roads are iffy, but this is you go here and then you go here and then you go here. And I'm like, I don't fucking care, man. I'm flying there. Like I'm not, I'm not walking. What do you think I am? I'm going to ascend uh, to the ground and then <laughs> fly out. Yeah, exactly. So, so I've been doing, I've been doing, I don't even want to call it exploring. I feel like I'm just ping ponging across the map, going to places that look interesting up and down just going all over the place and, I, and I'm, I'm definitely enjoying it so far what about you guys are you guys kind of uh, we will talk about it Stu. are you kind of like following those quests on the ground more you i don't want to say mainlining but are you sticking to specific breadcrumbs through the quests 
Yes and no. Like I, I just the first one that I did, I was like, okay, let me just get to this area and uh, mm -hmm. do towers, do shrines to unlock, you know, map and you know different areas that I can warp back to. And then what I did, which is like I did in Breath of the Wild, is once I finished that main story beat, I try to do everything in that area before moving on to the next. Uh, gotcha. So I'll just be like, oh, okay. here's a shrine. Here's a Korok that needs to meet his friend. Here's, oh, there's an interesting place. Let me do that and when I feel. And now that they mark caves as oh, yes. like, like done, you, there's like a little check mark next to them. It's so nice. Um, yeah. The quality of life stuff is so good. We'll get to that. But yeah, the um, that's what I do is I'll do section by section of the map and just fill it out as much as possible and i already have it kind of planned out i think i'll i'll think i'll make a a ring going from left to right from where i was uh and because gotcha. that's kind of how i did the the breath of the wild too but yeah yeah i i you know i i'm glad we're talking about kind of this exploration and how you guys are tackling the game uh like like the physical space of the game because it, it is one of the complaints that i do have with the game which is that I think the way that they've implemented the lookout towers, the way they've implemented the sky islands, plus the paraglider, plus other stuff you can do with zone eye devices, etc., has made horizontal travel basically like completely trivial in this game. Like I had I had like a 10 minute, like literally a 10 minute section the other day where I went where I unlocked one sky tower. I went up, went to some islands, landed on the ground at a different tower popped back up went across the sky island and landed at a third tower so within like a 10 15 minute period i had traversed half the map unlocked three towers and basically skipped a lot of content like there is nothing forcing me to go back to that content on the ground and i i think that's a minor problem with the game which is that they've kind of trivialized land traversal because of how easy it is with flight and gliding to move horizontally. So like there's a lot of stuff that I am intentionally missing because the game makes it so easy to miss on the ground. I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? Um, so I'm a freak. I walk everywhere in that game. <laughs> I, Same. Same. I don't use horses. I don't use Zonai devices. Oh. I walk. Um, oh, I use, I use zone eye devo <laughs> devices when I can, or if I'm in it, I'm in a, and I need to get to B, I will use a zone eye device, but I don't explore with zone eye devices. If that makes sense. Or it um, makes sense. Yeah. And I, That's the main cool. reason I do this is because I don't like to miss content. I made it about 90% of the way through the first, uh, quest and I fast traveled back to look at landing. And I said, and, and this is partly because of my job and I'm putting together how to guides. I'm like, right. I missed all of this stuff. So I literally walked to the place where that uh, first place takes place, 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 place. And um, I encountered uh, like four quests, met with a very critical person, uh, found all this other stuff. Yeah. And it was like, I understand your complaints, Ian. I, they're 100 percent valid. Uh, but you're an idiot. No, they're 100 percent valid. Um, <laughs> but I realized Nintendo's only way of knowing where you will be is roads. And so I figure yeah. if you if they want to tell me their linear story, I will follow these roads to the place that I'm going to. I don't always do that. Yeah. I mean, like That's good I point. get sidetracked all the time. But I, I say to myself, they want me to go to X right now. I'm going to walk there on the road and do all the things I encounter off the road, um, including my favorite inclusion in this entire game, which we can talk about an hour later, which is Addison, the sign holder. Uh, he is oh, currently my great. favorite part of the entire game. Uh, we don't have to get into a deep. You. <laughs> he is holding a sign up and you have to help him prop the other side of the sign up so he can let go and put more signs up. I think he is the Korok of here's the kingdom because i don't yeah. do any of the korok stuff in tears of the kingdom yeah. because yeah. it's Fuck the korok too stuff. annoying yeah. unless they're just to pick up the rock and drop the rock on their head or grab the thing on the ground they're too annoying they should have got rid of koroks and just done the addison yeah. stuff and he can some he's they should have made him like a leather worker who wants to get into construction so every time you fix the sign he makes your inventory bigger or something um yeah, that was probably oh, on a whiteboard somewhere um, yeah 
He is incredible. I over-engineer it every single time. His, when the <laughs> sign falls and he yells unforgivable. Unforgivable? I just, I think of uh, Lemon Grab from uh, Adventure Time. Like, I think it all! Like, just like, what are you I doing? always think of, um, it's like, I trusted what's you. his name? Uh, Princess Bride. Uh, Inconceivable. Oh, I think of that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Unforgivable. Uh, <laughs> unforgivable. Uh, it's just, he's my favorite. I love him. And so that's the other reason I stick to the roads because yeah. I see him. I know I'm, I'm heading towards something good because he's just there holding the sign up. And yeah. there's a variety of the signs. It's not the same every single time. Yes. The puzzle and the fact that, that he builds the sign, whatever angle you left it at, he just like ties it up in the worst yeah. way ever. <laughs> Yeah, my first so one good. is like angled like that, and he was like, "Oh, can, thank, thank you." You can <laughs> really standing. get away with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can. Oh my so god, um, he's. But yeah, no, no. Go ahead. Keep go going. Ahead. I was just gonna say, I I love his "Let me support you." That's what he says when yeah. you when you like come up to him. He's like talking to himself, like "Let me support you." Like his love, I love it so much. I hope they end but up yeah. at the end. Yeah, president. That's all I want. Uh, um, is it which one is it? Is it uh, Wilson? No, it's Hudson. 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 Uh, Married to Rondeson. Oh, we. Oh my God, that's right. I forgot about that. From Breath of the Wild. From Breath of the Wild. Um, I don't know if you played that. It's the it's the prequel. <laughs> to hey, the kingdom. right, 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 that's right. That's a good. Right, that's right. a good segue. Oh. Which is, uh, we found this out recently. Which is that Jake Terrio, member of Subpixel. Never played Breath of the Wild because of didn't have a switch at the time, didn't have a Wii U at the time. You got a switch later, etc. He's a horrible person. I, I'm going to pose this question. I think I have an answer for it personally. But some of the reviews that came out said, hey, this game is basically a better Breath of the Wild and you don't need to play Breath of the Wild anymore, etc. And if somebody hasn't played either game, would you recommend they start with Breath of the Wild or would you recommend they go straight to Tears of the Kingdom? I say I say Breath of the Wild just because there's so much in Tears of the Kingdom that builds on what Breath of the Wild. I mean, we're talking all about Tarrytown. We're talking about Hidano yeah. Village. Like yeah. we're talking about these locations that you get so enamored with, and it is really locations, characters too. Um, uh, what's her name? Pura and Impa and like all of these <laughs> people that come back. Uh, Zelda. Yeah. Oh yeah, Zelda. Uh, <laughs> Who? Uh, even um, yeah, even like He's side characters character. like Empire. Yeah, Yellow. Zelda is you play as. Oh my god. You play as Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> even <laughs> evil one. But I think. Um, but I think you're totally. I think you're totally right though. I because I agree with that. You know, I when I first started the game, I was a little struggling. I was like, oh, this is more of the same. But it, it's it's kind of two things. It's exactly like you said. You have that nostalgia for Breath of the Wild. But the, the developers, I don't know if you know this, but they're they're pretty fucking good at making video games and they're yep. pretty smart. And so they are deliberately building this game. I don't want to say not to be nostalgia based, but th it feels like they have as much an interest in how this world has changed since Breath of the Wild. And it has changed mm -hmm. in the same way that I have those questions. I want to know what happened to Terrytown. I want to know how I want to I want to know uh, Rito. I want to know all this, all these different characters and places, even ones where I'm just like, like, oh, I had that weird fight in that forest one time. I wonder how it's there, what's there now. Right. And and it feels like the developers had that as well, and they have delivered on that. And so, honestly, I, I think Tears of the Kingdom is a fantastic game. I think it's much, 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 much better when you come to it after having played Breath of the Wild. The caveat being, if you're going to play them, play Breath of the Wild, I would say sit on it for three fucking yeah. years minimum, and yes. then come back to Tears yes. of the Kingdom. I was going to say, too, there's there's only uh, like you don't you can't appreciate without the amount of time that it's taken for Tears of the Kingdom to come out, be delayed. All of this, all yeah. of the hype in the real world that exists for the game only feeds the nostalgia and the, you know, kind of aha moments that happen yeah. when you realize that uh, um, what's it called? Ultra Hand is the is the ability from the first one but so but you know tweaked much and just <laughs> exact much better much much yeah. better so you're right i think you need to give it some time to, to simmer so, and sit with you in that way yeah go well so i was just gonna say uh breath of the wild i purchased and played 40 hours of when it first came out 
mm-hmm. and I never finished it. And then I started it over in 2021 and I finished, I only have the finish time of June 8th, 2021 is when I oh, finished wow. Breath of the Wild right. um, with 101 hours. So okay. two, less than two years ago was yeah. enough time, uh, I would say. Although I don't exactly count it the same because I played <laughs> it at the beginning and then, uh, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say that is the one issue. If you you have to start with Breath of the Wild and then wait two years to play Tears yeah. of the Kingdom. Um, but then at that point you can play both of them 4k on your computer. So, uh, who's really winning there to be honest <laughs> right? with Exactly. You? I made the mistake of yeah. getting too close to my 4k TV and boy, the horror Ooh. I saw on that yeah, TV. The game, game looks great handheld oh, yeah. and the game yeah. looks great on a small TV or a TV you're far away from, but a uh, Lord in heaven. Don't look too closely cause it's got oh. some issues. Well, let me switch the switch has some exactly. issues the, yes. yeah i yeah. shouldn't blame it on the game i just got a fancy yeah. new i got the <laughs> tears of the kingdom oled fancy Ooh. it there was one left at my local target and i was like i have had my switch since march 17th 27 2017 that i got with yep. breath of the wild in new jersey like it's time <laughs> for an upgrade uh um, hear that <laughs> <laughs> The Jersey part specifically. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah, you yeah. for yeah. Condolence. Um, but, but it's that that OLED screen. I didn't realize it. I was like, oh, this game, like the colors in that game, are yeah. it's spe- specifically yes. Tears of the Kingdom because I played a little Breath of the Wild, and Breath of the Wild is weirdly kind of it's like overexposed a little bit, like it's a little washed out, uh, mm-hmm. in some some areas, but. Like if you go up into those sky islands and the sun is setting and they hit that yeah. golden hour light, oh my god. I yeah. tweeted I tweeted something out the night it launched of like um you know I was so worried for Tears of the Kingdom. I was so like how will it fill the hole that Breath of the Wild had made, you know, like I had played it kind of like you mm-hmm. will like every 6 months coming back to it uh and then just stopped at a certain point when I felt like I was done. Uh, and I'd done everything I could, but there was a moment where I was standing on that tutorial island, and uh, I was like looking for what to do, and this cloud came through in that golden hour and just enveloped me in mist, and then just mm-hmm. went away. And I watched it go yeah. away, and I watched the clouds move around me, and I was like, everything's gonna be that, okay. That happened to me today. Okay. Yeah. Like I didn't realize clouds could fucking do that until I was on a skyline and this cloud yeah. came through and I was like, what is this real fucking cloud like envelop me in fog and then it slowly moves off. That yep. That's literally some of the best clouds I've ever seen in a video game. Yes. It's fucking wild. Yes. Yeah. It happened yes. to me today because I was in the middle of like getting my bearings and the fog cloud set in and I was like, oh, oh shit. Like, wh- where am I? Where am oh, I? Yeah, something's yeah. wrong. A little bit of fear. <laughs> um, there have been a lot of moments in this game that I... I hate when people say they're like, oh, I was like, I was amazed. Or I said, holy shit. But there have been four or five of those moments where I like mm-hmm. self-realized that that's happening. One of them yeah. we can't, we absolutely cannot talk about. Nope. Um, but I know and another about one yeah. we can talk about next week. Uh, mm-hmm. But the one, it's funny that you mentioned Hateno Village because I was walking up the hill to the laboratory up there yeah. as sunset was hitting. And I looked back down at the village and I had the biggest smile. I was so happy because I just felt yep. like I was yeah. like home. Like, oh, I'm yes, de- there's something about Zelda in particular yes. world building. There's just like rooms with stuff in them and you can't interact with it rarely, but it just feels like lived in like, oh, here's yep. the little kitchen. Here's the little and you just talk to people and they just like talk about shit and the like under their breath writing that always occurs the like yes. slightly gray text is yes. so good and it just feels so real yeah. um it's the um it's in ocarina the um the uh it's the like how he's carved little in uh in his village in the kokiri forest like yeah he's carved little little graffiti on his tree it's like those moments i know exactly what you're talking every single game has those things it's so and hateno nice. is the one for me I, that i would just like i'll sit there and i'll just be like you get that feeling of like you're just home and it's yeah. all yeah. okay you don't have to yeah, worry exactly. I, and and oh, it's just i love it oh. It's a great feeling. Yeah. It's fun. I just uh talking about feelings. <laughs> I 
I do get mad when I play this game. And I, I need to take okay. you on a little journey and I need you to okay. stick with me until the end. It's going to be worth it. Cool. I get I get mad when I'm playing this game because. Again, I'm going on a journey here. You got to let me finish. Mm-hmm. I don't think this game should be that great because they're not doing anything that fucking bonkers. And a lot of what they're doing that works so well has already been done in Breath of the Wild and has already been done in previous uh, previous Zelda games. So like Breath of the Wild, we're talking about the incredible sense of exploration, you know, the stamina system, the signposting in terms of like no matter where you are, you can look around and uh, the way they've arranged the landscape, you can immediately tell where you are by the landmarks. Previous mm-hmm. Zelda games, you know, like uh, one of the things that struck me about Ocarina of Time when I first played it a couple years ago is the way that it introduces new mechanics. It's like, look, we're going to make you work a little bit. We're going to give you a new mechanic. We're going to teach it to you simply. You're going to have to practice that. Then we're going to teach it to you a little bit harder. And then you have to practice that. And then we're going to teach you the advanced technique. And then you have to practice that. And now you're going to take that into the rest of the world. And the world has changed because of that. The lived in feeling, the, the interesting characters, the great writing. None of this shit is groundbreaking. There is a, almost nothing other than the ultra hand stuff in tears of the kingdom that is groundbreaking but what makes me fucking mad is that the reason why this game hits so fucking good and the reason why the whole world is going crazy for this game is because every other fucking game developer needs to get their head out of their ass and start taking fucking notes from zelda like they've been doing this shit for decades like game design is not that hard when you just need to steal from zelda like like will and i i feel like we bring it up like four or five times a year whenever we're playing a game and like shit like a modern fucking game all the way up to games released nowadays and we play it and we're like why are you introducing something like that why does it feel so terrible why does it look so bad why are you introducing the mechanic in such a weird way and it's like just do it how fucking zelda does it like they solved the problem they circled the fucking wheel stop making square fucking wheels and so i get mad playing this game because i'm like this is fantastic but it should not be this fantastic it should be the fucking norm by now and that pisses me off am i crazy about that no you're not at all and i think the reason why uh even in zelda terms it should be the norm because i just played um uh, Skyward Sword, the the Switch, you know, remaster, yeah. and that's a you know, it's a ten year old game, but one of the newer three D mm-hmm. Zeldas. Um, and even that feels archaic compared to Tears of the Kingdom because I don't think even Zelda games have done all of them at once. Like you yeah. have, I think to your point, it's like each game has its thing that it revolution like brought to the table and was revolutionary at the time. But Tears of the Kingdom is the first one where it's actually all come together in a cohesive piece. Yeah. And that's to your point. You're like, and then you're like, oh, why isn't this happened yet? Why isn't this happening across the gaming industry? Exactly. Like it, it, it's so yeah. clear when it comes together. I completely agree with you that it is kind of maddening to be like, holy fuck, there isn't really a, a lot that's no. different. It's just so cohesive and so yeah. works so well together. It's so true. Yeah, and, it's and so that, true. That's like I, I i may have already said this but that was kind of the crux of why i was getting mad when i first started playing it the first couple hours i was like this is just breath of the wild and that's that's a very reductionary say, thing to say but i was like this is just breath of the wild but why does it still feel so fucking fantastic and new and weird yep. and it's because the industry has done fucking nothing in the last six years they have it's not true. learned the lessons from breath of the wild and they have not innovated well they have innovated into games as a service into excessive monetization into like fucking marvel humor and it's just it's infuriating that this game is so good when the rest of the industry should have been like that after breath of the wild and they just haven't been uh, i was just gonna say quickly because you brought it up here um you brought it up i didn't officer um <laughs> no but uh they could have easily said hey we're adding one or more new maps to this yeah. game oh yeah let's yeah. just keep the middle let's just let's just keep the let's just keep the the breath of the wild map the same and move on from there like we'll add more yeah. stuff for other things i didn't say anything um, no, no, don't worry about so it so let's just let's just but they didn't they said fuck it no let's, yeah, yeah. there's drastic let's changes change yeah 
the entire map, like obviously the landscape and sort of stuff is the same, but every area I've come back to yeah. is familiar yet different. Um, down to all like I went to one, I said, Hey, I remember this puzzle. I don't remember a cave being there. Walk into the cave, it's a similar type of puzzle, but it's all cave based now. And it's like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. and, and it just makes me sad because I know when the next Marvel Spider Man game comes out in yeah. September, it's just gonna be New York City again. I was thinking maybe they'll add all the streets of Manhattan, Manhattan this time instead of skipping every yeah. other. Where's they, Brooklyn? Probably, Where's yeah. Queens? That's what I'm they saying. They probably won't. Yeah. I mean, yeah. put it in like Singapore or something. Like move Spider-Man <laughs> around. Like yeah. it's, give us give us even the simple shit like the side quest in 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 Spider-Man were just like five different formulas that they rehashed over and over and yep. over again it was just different yeah. types of police calls you're answering to it's just the simplest fucking shit just do it better you know I, yeah. i'm sorry i'm getting really upset here no but no it's but like... to, and but to be fair uh breath of the wilds here's the kingdom side quests are that exact same thing but there's an element that we can't talk about as to where you're doing them that makes it feel yes. so much more yeah. true yeah um wait oh hold on i you know i wanted to talk to your point about sky islands and movement because yeah i i completely respect your thought of that being a gripe wow. against the game I, <laughs> just kidding you go damn ahead. Stu. But, no um the i i think that's actually a benefit and a um like we're talking about i think it's a um a positive and a plus of the game of them introducing everything so early and making everything so easy that you mm -hmm. get stuff done in that game in a way that I have never, like I think of Ghost of Tsushima and yeah. I platinumed that game. I actually, I genuinely love that game. I loved writing in that game. Just it gave the same feeling as Breath of the Wild of just exploration, signposting, all of that stuff. But it is a trek to get from one point to the other if you're not fast traveling. And yeah. if you have these sky islands that allow you to get kind of your basics done, then you can get to the like Hyrule field level and walk yeah. around and see all the weird stuff because you're like, all right, I've already, that's, you know, that's done. I don't have to think about it anymore. I specifically in terms of like the sky um, lookouts and all of that stuff, you're like, okay, I have my map, yeah. I'm ready to go. Uh, yeah. Also, there's not, to, uh, so far as I've seen, there's not a lot on the Sky Islands. There are a lot of kind Not really, yeah. Right? Which is kind of great because you can just use them as they're meant to be, which is like stepping stones to do that stuff and leaves open for even more exploration on the ground. Uh, so I, I, it is, I, like I said, I do think that at some point it makes it a little bit too easy to kind of just like around and not really take in the game as you would want to but it also it's a double-edged sword of like it also allows more exploration that's what i think yeah and, and i i think you're totally correct because that's one of the things i've noticed about this game versus breath of the wild I, i'm not sure if this is true or not or if it's just because i'm playing it as a sequel and not the main game mm -hmm. but i feel like it is introducing mechanics and you are getting to things in the game much quicker than you did in breath of the wild like yep. all of a sudden you got bomb flowers and you're throwing stuff around etc yes. and like like all it, it's it's like exactly like you said it's laying it's laying out the basics of all the mechanics as quickly as possible which allows you to play around with them explore the world and then build upon that throughout the rest of the game instead of parceling them out throughout the game exactly and which is which is what you said with ocarina was so amazing they're just condensing yep. it and and you know to the first couple hours as opposed to the whole game being that and i think exploration and movement is the same way and can we talk about how amazing it feels to attach a fucking wing to your arrow and then watch it fly farther or yeah. you know uh, yeah, a it works. sapphire and you know watch people explode into ice i think that is one of the things quality of lifestyle of all of that random junk i had in my inventory in breath of the wild yep. is now used in a dynamic way yep. it's been exactly. said to death in reviews and stuff but it's just all along that same mentality of just introducing as much as possible as quick as possible as densely as possible and then you can create giant flaming penis men and <laughs> yep. you know it's uh, good to go <laughs> my my favorite thing is i use arrows way more now but mm -hmm. also you can pull the arrow back push up on the d-pad for that menu 
you can be like you can sort it super quickly so you can be like oh yeah. i want what's going to do the most damage i don't want to use a diamond let me go back a few things oh where are all my zone eye devices wait where are all they sort it by how much you use items so yes every time i need to throw a bright bloom because i need to see in this area i'm in like just <laughs> deep, no no i <laughs> At night, <laughs> at night, it gets at really night. dark at night. No. Yeah, it gets really dark at night. Yeah, yeah. I will say, caves that are dimly lit, I still use them. Um, oh, yeah. all the time because. Oh, yeah. I, it, uh, although I can just ascend out of the cave, I mark my way in with with the bright blooms. Oh, so I can that's I can know which paths I've I've searched already. Nice. Um, so like it's great to just do that, and then the the keys eyes the different animals eyes mm -hmm. to track onto them because some yep. of them are like flame some are ice and then oh, just yeah. using those to one shot everything and i don't have to aim at it uh it just feels so good um i yeah i just oh the fuse the fuse stuff is great um amazing yeah it just yeah it just feels so good this game is good um yeah fuse oh. uh, sorry alter hand ascend and what was the other one I think. Oh, oh, recall. Oh, Prince recall, of Persia recall. Sands of Time. Yeah, exactly. Sands of Time. That one's <laughs> very cool. Um, yeah. You can get up to some mischief with that one. Uh, I realized that, you, like, you, um, when a Moblin or Bacoblin, I love the guys that have the little backpacks. Yeah. Nah, it's not much of a story. Yeah. It's just an enemy type, I, I, I hope. Uh, but when they throw something at you, you can use that reverse time to throw it back <gasps> at them. <gasps> No way! Yeah. I didn't realize That's that. I the, Sorry the to spoil stone, a little bit, but yeah, the stone golems you can do that. when they throw their fists at you, I just rewind it back to them. I didn't uh, think you could do that. See, that's yeah. why I love talking about this game because none of that stuff yeah. to me feels like a spoiler. It's just like, oh, this is going to enrich the next time that I play like yeah. tenfold because well, now I know to do that. It's crazy. <clears throat> we at work we have a Tears of the Kingdom chat, and I was just like, oh, hey, I got, I went to Terry Town and I did X Y Z in this quest, and the to the reviewer and the guy who's been playing it for two weeks are like, oh yeah, how do how do we do that part? And I was just oh like, my God. excuse me? <laughs> Is that um, Max? Max? Yeah, Max like didn't know how to do this part of the quest. That's some, and, I love um, that. That's so funny. To be fair, I think Steve, the reviewer, had done mm. it, but I don't think he remembered how to do it. So I was just like, yeah. oh yeah, you just do X, Y, and Z, ascend to this, grab this, put it there, and then, and then you're good. And they're like, oh, thanks. <laughs> Like, yeah, I love crazy. that. But okay, I also, also realized over. if, if uh, and it's funny too because uh, I remember uh, Steve had brought this up in one of the meetings. Mm -hmm. He went to the wrong order of the like. There's a you can do them in any order of the four main things, but he just didn't go to the one they're pushing you towards. So he mm -hmm. like got his ass handed to him. So it's funny that in mm -hmm. even these guys who had it two weeks before it came out didn't have enough time to see every because. I mean, they have other things to do in their jobs. Right. Uh, yeah. It just makes you realize how big this game is. Yeah, um, it's massive. And I, I said this on the Discord, but I don't see. I know it'll happen, but I currently don't see the sunset on this game for me yet. Oh, like no. two or three Probably weeks months. out. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, how far am I going to get until I'm just like, and am I going to am I going to say, OK, it's, it's here it comes. Should I just go beat the game? Or am I going to put it down and then pick it up again at some point? I don't know. You Either know. one's valid. You know, that's the beauty of the game is like Breath of the Wild 2. I didn't completely finish that game, I don't think, until maybe two years after it had come out, like doing all the shrines and <laughs> all that stuff. And I feel that the game just allows for that. Like, if you want to yeah. put it down and come back... That's that is your prerogative and you are more than welcome to do it. Like there's no I love these games because there's no wrong answers ever mm -hmm. in the game, like with yeah. anything that you do. And I, that's a beautiful thing to be able to play through and talk to people about and be like, oh, you've experienced this. I haven't experienced that yet. But like, I'm so happy that we're here together experiencing this thing, this monumental moment together in some way, yeah. shape or form. I just I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say how um how often do you forget that you have ascension? Maybe 25% of the time. That, that Same, it definitely happens right? more than I would like. Yeah. Where I'm like how do I get up there? How am I get up there and, and then I'm just like ah, and then I go 
oh wait i have i have ascend and there's like an overhang and i'm like oh you idiot I, honestly I'm, half the time I, i'll be like oh i could use ascend but you know i'm gonna climb it anyways let's let's, let's yeah, just take the challenge yeah yeah, yeah. i I'll love take that. the challenge i love I'm that a, i'm a little bitch with ascend i'll like <laughs> i'll like do it on crevices and like half of Link's <laughs> arm will be sticking out of the wall. Oh, wow. Just like, oh man. Um, yeah, I, I use it way too much. Uh, recall's the one I forget. I have to remind myself of. Yeah. And yeah. um and f- actually, honestly, fuse fuse weapons and shields is the one I least use. Fuse for arrows constantly. But oh. I I rarely fuse I rarely fuse new shields other than my skateboards. Ooh. But yeah. I I well, rarely fuse weapons so too because I have a lot of good weapons and I just go get them repaired so I don't have to worry about them. But you're talking about the Octa Rock repair. Yeah, Octa Rock. Oh, oh, okay. I thought there was like a. I was like someone in the game that does it, but I have like two weapons that are like 30 or 40 plus. So it's like I just wipe things out with them and they don't break very often. They're good for a while. I, I don't know because like I, I some of the the mob drops are like plus 14 like plus 20 so yeah as yeah, long yeah. as you have those in your inventory and then you just fuse with like a stick no, you're like you're don't set. get me wrong i have like fifth or like 10 or whatever 10 inventory slots and i mm. i just push those to the end and when i get to it i'll like oh i should fix that now that i'm here like i'm i'm running oh, okay. through the first like five or six weapons oh got it yeah gotcha, i just save gotcha. like the more important ones because i'm like these look really Same. cool and don't do a ton of damage uh so i'll just hold on to them for now yeah save i'm not like fights. regularly going back to the octorox <laughs> gotta fix myself. i was gonna ask what was what has been your favorite fuse that you've done so oh. far i can start if you I, want me to because i have i, I I haven't gotten crazy, but I really like the uh, the spear plus the the flame zone eye device because it's great to basically just jab people and set them on fire at the same time. Yep. Um, and especially going through some of the cold areas, there's definitely ice you need to melt and certain stuff, and it's easy to just yep. pull out a weapon and just and do it, That's and it's so been great. Good. That fire zone eye device is so cool to put yeah. anywhere, like shields or spears and stuff. Will do you have one? Um. Minecart on a on a big like two hander because it one hits all the rocks. Oh, um, that's, that's handy. Hurts. On like a traveler like sword, a, those are the two handers. It's like right? a heavy, yeah. heavy hammer. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah so basically it, just a hammer. Yeah, so that's probably my favorite. I, other than all the arrow ones that I constantly use, I right. do ice fruit yeah. all the time with arrows. And then oh. for elemental stuff, like the opposite element will always insta kill the the thing right right so Mm -hmm. that i i'm like constantly using those um that's awesome and then my my skateboard shield i love my skateboard Skateboard shield shield is so good i found out that if you put a mushroom on a stick it creates a bounce effect so like if you hit someone and they just go (laughs) flying through the air it doesn't even it doesn't even kill them but like they will they it bounces them pretty far um, have you guys knocked you enemies space. really far away and then you get the items still no oh, no I like i i don't know when it doesn't always happen but i knocked i wonder if it was because like it was important but i knocked an enemy off a cliff or something and i can't remember if it was like a sky island or in a shrine but it then popped up that i picked up the items and it was oh, clearly weird. from that guy and i was oh, like is this yeah, like a weird, weird glitch territory where it's like you get those items now I wasn't sure if you guys ran into that. I haven't uh, seen it. Cuz I couldn't yet. seem to make it happen again. Oh. Gotcha. Um okay, final call. Any last things you want to say these surface level Zelda things? Um <laughs> I don't have anything else on my notes games other great. than games, games great. great. Just great. Just play the game. Honestly, oh. just fucking play the game. Yes. If you don't have a Switch, fuck you. Go buy a Switch, play the game <laughs> and all the other great yeah. Switch games. Yeah. My notes just say, I smell bad, I look cool, Hateno Village for life, which I definitely wrote. So uh, we hit all of those. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We hit. Yeah. I mean, it's still, it's pungent. I'll just say that much. Even through Uh, the computer. Yeah. The middle layer is very pungent. (laughs) Um, Anyways, folks, uh, I think that's going to do it for the show. Wow. That went by really quickly. Wow. Um, When you love what you're doing, you're not doing local chat. Tell you that much. Um, (laughs) I'm going to hit the outro 
uh, button here. I believe it is the one labeled outro. Hey, hey look at hey, that, worked. folks. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Stu and Ian, thank you for being here. Don't forget to check out Stu on the internet. Uh, he just came out with a great new video. At Stewie Reviewy on the Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. And then your YouTube is... Super Donk, like Super Donkey Kong. Super Hell Donk, yeah. like Super Donkey Kong. That's really long. That's such a great, so type that's a great all that. Name. <laughs> that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. Um, folks, we'll be back uh, to Tuesday, Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern with the Save Data Boys. I got three of those boys to cram onto the scan lines. Um, I have a. I found a really good scan lines game, and I don't even know if I'm going to get to play it. I might just keep them there for two hours. Um, and then Ian will be back with some Kingdom Hearts on Tuesday, hopefully. Uh, but until then, thank you so much for watching at Subpixel Team, subpixelfilms.com. We'll see you next week.